Hey guys, uh, so welcome to another screencast on OpenShift. So previously, basically, I sh I kind of walked you through uh, what I did to install OpenShift Origin on a two-node system, uh, one being the broker and one being the node. Now in this one, I'm going to show you how to detach the role of DNS as opposed to uh, the implementation how you have. Uh, in this case, what I want to do is I already have uh, a DNS um, infrastructure running. So instead of uh, using another DNS infrastructure on the network, uh, I want to integrate it with my existing DNS infrastructure. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is to show you that it can be done in OpenShift, and because OpenShift is uh, designed to be very modular, uh, it uses a lot of plugins to allow you to talk to, you know, the the different implementation of your, you know, your infrastructure. So um, basically, I'm logged into my DNS server. Uh, so what I want to do now is to um, get the key, uh, basically, because what happens is OpenShift uses the dynamic DNS approach uh, just to secure the communications of uh, creating these domain names for applications and all that and deleting that. So uh, what I have here is uh, in, I have bind basically running uh, in binding D and yeah so uh, basically I went ahead and created a, a, a key. Um, yeah, so hopefully you can check uh, the documentation for bind on how to create um, these keys. Uh, I'm not going to show you in this video. Uh, maybe next, maybe in other videos in the future. Uh, basically, but what I want to do is um, kind of show you the, uh, you know, what's in the private key. Uh, I'm not really bothered so much here because this is not this is just a lab environment, so you can see the key if you want. But you know, we want to make sure that um, nobody sees this key. Of course, this is supposed to be the secure key that's going to be used for that. Uh, so basically, what I want to do is I'm going to copy, uh, I'm going to copy this key here, and uh, you know, based on our previous installation video, um, I'm going to paste it here. I will use it later. And once once that's done, uh, I'm going to switch to my broker node. So now, uh, basically, every installation of OpenShift will have uh, in Etsy an OpenShift directory. And in this directory, you're going to see so many um, configuration files. You're going to see the broker configuration file. Uh, we're going to touch in on some of these things on, on, you know, in other screencasts. And of course, you're going to see um, you know, quick starts, the JSON. Um, basically, you're going to see uh, different implementations. You can see where it has it, the first default user in this case, HT, in the HTPass WD, because by default, it uses the HTPass authentication. Uh, of course, you can swap this also with your implementation of, let's say, Kubernetes, LDAP, and a, and a whole lot of directory services you will. Of course, you can integrate it with the Red Hat um, IPA, or Open IPA. Um, so basically, hopefully, that will be in some future videos, if you will. But for now, um, you know, we're just trying to swap our DNS infrastructure or implementation here. All right, so in the Etsy OpenShift directory, uh, in the plugins, the D directory, uh, you notice that OpenShift went ahead and created um, an NS or DNS NS update uh, configuration file. So we're going to go ahead and edit this file. And here you can see the, uh, it tries to kind of um, match some of the things we already have. Uh, this was because we mentioned it in the installation and configuration path. Uh, so everything here is correct uh, from the bind um, server to the port to the key name and you know um, and everything here but the only thing that is not correct is because uh, it's the key value it generated its own key value uh, in this case we don't want that we want it to match if it has to uh, use our implementation of dns then it has to match the the exact value that is here so hopefully this makes sense uh, remember this is going uh, the ip address is going to our dns infrastructure our dns server um so and of course the dns server uh has a zone in this case it has authority over which is the app of model local and this is where we want to store our applications uh, of course our applications will extend from this domain uh, from this the, uh, domain name if you will and the key name in this case is app model local uh, so once we make this change here uh, still noting the key um, we have to go into the um, name D configuration here, and you can see it created a similar kind of key uh, automatically for us here. So what I want to do is I want to swap the keys, uh, right? So you can see that this key matches what we removed earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this and replace it with our key on the um, Key on the DNS server, so I missed the copy of that. Let me copy that again, 
and we need to update the key file so we're going to go ahead and delete all this and replace it with the key uh, file here all right so once once this is done we can go ahead and actually count test it and uh, one of the things you also look at here is the app the model local the key file uh, so app the model local the key and you want to also make sure that uh, you update the secret here all right so uh, I lost connection I lost the clickboard content of the clickboard so I'm just going to do that again all right so hopefully you've seen uh, the places we, we, we changed. Uh, first of all, we edited the OpenShift Origin DNS update.com file. Uh, and secondly, um, we went into the bar in the directory and we updated the key definitions in the private and uh, the key files here. And we updated the app.model local, uh, in this case, whatever domain you created or you provided earlier. All right, so once we do that, uh, uh, you know we can test our ns update tool uh, by typing ns update and in this case you provide the private key uh, so uh, we are missing a configuration option so uh, my bad and we're going to tell it the server to update we're going to point it to our dns infrastructure uh, this is us testing it and um, i am hoping that i don't get any errors here but if i do i'm going to tell you why i'm getting the errors in fact I'm going to tell you why your error is going to happen if it does happen. Uh, usually, there's going to be, um, you know, your time has to match. Uh, so, for instance, you must have an NTP implementation on your infrastructure. Um, uh, I think I did not install that, but even if I did, uh, you, it might possibly does not match. So, um, it's very sensitive to the timing uh, because this is to prevent any, um, you know, kind of a mind the middle attack. So, you want to make sure that the key or the time on both machines, in this case, the broken node and my DNS infrastructure matches. Uh, that's the time uh, if it doesn't then of course we're going to get an error when we try to update any value here all right so just to test this i'm going to add a default or uh, just a dummy zone in this case so let's just call this uh you know let's just call this uh dummy the mild the, you know the local and it's going to be you know um, staying here for 30 minutes and it's going to be a txt file and in this case we're just going to provide a sample so test string and um, once we do that uh, we're going to send all right so in this case I did not get any error um, usually this is because maybe my time uh, matches so but just to show you uh, that something happened I'm going to check the um, the dialogue messages so you can see um, what happened was there was a there was somebody a uh, client one one or twenty in this case our our, our broker uh, basically using the app the model local uh, sign up signed a kind of like uses that and it was approved and the zone model local was updated and added a an error record in this case a dummy text so um, just to show you that it worked uh, if I do a uh, on maybe the broker for instance or maybe even a note that it's not part of it right so I'm going to do a dig all right so it's going to be a dig and you know I'm just going to type uh, dummy that model local and I want to make sure that uh, it serves the type text Hopefully that will work. So it's taking some time. Uh, we can go ahead and test that actually uh, on the broken node as well. So uh, I'm going to quit this, and I'm going to do a dig at one and two in this case. So it gives us a lot of addresses. Um, in this case, I just want to limit it. So at this stage, we want to check for dummy dot mal dot local, and it's going to be a txt record. All right. So um, in this case, this went ahead and resolved. Uh, so for some reason my my uh, my my node did not respond correctly or oh, okay it did uh, this was because I didn't specify the server but what is interesting here you can see our test string here so that means our record has been added and DNS has been affected for um, successfully so what this will do is you to use the bind DNS plugin the NS update plugin to always update the records and the records will move to and be created on our DNS infrastructure Alright, so uh, before we end this video, let me um, quickly 
uh, go back to uh, my broker node and to specify our server I'm going to delete the record all right and let me txt type and I'm going to send it and I'm going to quit all right so in this case um, hopefully uh, when we try this again uh, yes so nothing happened uh, that means the record was deleted successfully all right so you can see here that um, it's not uh, rocket science to kind of swap the implementations and this is because of the you know, kind of flexibility of uh, of OpenShift. So hopefully you've uh, enjoyed the video and uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, uh, please drop them in the comments uh, below and we'll feel free to kind of um, also recommend other stuff, right? So uh, I hope you enjoyed this one as well and hope to see you in the next one. Uh, thanks a lot.